G'day everyone, welcome to New Tech. My name's Miles and it's wonderful to have you here. In today's video, we're gonna be checking out my Workbee because I've had it for about three years now and I wanted to give you an update, so let's get started. As you can see, my Workbee is looking a little bit different from when you last saw it. This axis has changed quite a lot and I'm gonna talk about why I upgraded that in a second. But before I do that, just in general, this machine has been fantastic for my general use over the past three years. I have cut a lot of like panels on this machine. Um, I have made different upgrades over the time, but essentially this one is a really fantastic machine for any beginner. And also it's a great size to have in a garage. It's reasonably rigid and quite sturdy in itself. Now, a couple of years ago, I did build this table as well. It has this awesome control panel. I did these 3D printed buttons and a lot of the electronics myself. It did take quite a long time for the electronics to be built. Um, so it's probably something that I wouldn't do it again, but I certainly would uh, do a variation of it if I ever was to build another machine. And that's something that is super exciting because I can just stand at the front of the machine and I have control to turn a lot of things on and off. So I really like that. It does kind of look a bit like an arcade machine, but I quite like challenging those aspects of my designs. I've also swapped over my controller. So going from this Arduino Uno down to a Tiny B. Now a Tiny B is just a ESP32 control board. It's mainly used for 3D printers, but it also really works well with CNCs because it uses the same language, um, but I've also installed Fluid NC on that control board. And that has worked so nicely. So the main difference about upgrading from the Uno to the ESP32 using Fluid NC is that it has a lot more functionality. It can process a lot more information much faster than an Arduino Uno. It still talks in the garble language, so which is really great. It can still talk to a lot of the programs that I use. I still use the same um, post processors from Fusion 360. But one of the great things that happens is that I was able to run this machine about 500 millimeters per minute um, using the Arduino Uno. And I think that that would be considered as pretty fast using that. Uh, but I've been able to go up to about 10,000 millimeters per minute on the Fluid NC, mainly because it can process a lot more information, output those pulses to the motors a lot faster than the Uno used to. So that's really exciting that I can move this machine so much much faster. However, I just capped it off about 8,000 just to make sure because at 10,000 it was getting to the point where the motors were stalling because it was going way too fast for these um, motors. Now let's talk really quickly about the upgrades I've made in this machine. I've mainly made them because I wanted to be a bit more adventurous in what things that I could cut in this machine and I really got over my Z axis maxing out every time that will lift up. So these upgrades are mainly for people who have the original Workbee CNC and that means that they have just the traditional uh, plastic wheels. There are a lot of different variations out there that you can already buy that already have all linear rails set up. They are a lot more expensive, but this is more an upgrade for those people who have a machine just like myself and want to take it to the next level and give it the, the most output that it can possibly do. And this is more the essential upgrades. If you want to take this machine to its full capacity, these are some of the upgrades that I certainly suggest to you upgrading. Now, now, the reason why I wanted to get into it is because I had a lot of issues when I started to cut aluminium. So one of the main things was is that when it was cutting out the aluminium, it would start to get a certain chatter at a certain point. It started to wobble this axis forwards and backwards every time that it would move the axis to the side which then to me made sense that this axis itself is quite flexible and, and not rigid enough for cutting aluminium. So I decided then at that point that I needed to do something about it. And so I went ahead, not only did I upgrade the, the Z axis to a linear rail, I also upgraded the, uh, the C-beam itself. So this is the super thick C-beam plus also using so these are the HGWCC20 uh, linear rails and I did get these off AliExpress. Now these have worked fantastic. They also give rigidity to the X axis, um, but they also use these linear rail blocks as well. Now the problem is with these linear rail blocks is I got the extra wide ones. So unfortunately I can't put four next to each other. I ended up putting three, one, two, and three 
in like a triangular formation and that's worked really well for this z-axis and the z-axis does not have any movement at all now i didn't upgrade the side axes well firstly that it would have been a very difficult um, upgrade to do easily i would have to um, alter the entire machine if i was to do it but i really didn't have any problems with the these rails here these ones don't have really any flex in them so i'm really happy with uh, these blocks itself it was mainly the z block and also the x rail too that i had a lot of twist in this so the reason is is that i can move this axis to and fro and um, from this video here you can see how much that the uh, the whole axis would move and you can see what happens when you're cutting really tough materials such as this aluminium that when it came through so this was facing this way on the machine when it was coming around the aluminium and it got to the point where it was traveling across the x-axis that it would start to chatter and go out of control because of the flex of the machine the machine just couldn't hold its rigidity anymore it was so far into the material and it just would shake that head on the machine so i had to do something to upgrade it and this upgrade has been fantastic so this z-axis comes with linear rails plus it comes with a, a 1605 ball screw and that means that it's super rigid and has a lot of control so i'm really happy about that and using this 2.2 kilowatt spindle i no longer have any slight dip in the center because not only is the c-beam um, extra strong but also these rails give it extra support as well so i'm extremely happy with this upgrade and um, it's certainly one of those upgrades that I suggest anyone who has the original work CNC, these are the type of upgrades that I certainly suggest upgrading to. And I've also upgraded to these proximity switches. These proximity switches are fantastic because that they don't have any physical uh, attachment. Um, and you can see that when it gets close enough that it's about four millimeters away, it doesn't um, then bump into it and cause any issues with the, the switches triggering off or destroying any switches themselves. So I really like these proximity switches that I've upgraded to as well. So with all these new upgrades that I am now really happy with how this machine is put together. There's a couple of things I still need to fix up. I need to redo all the wiring because I've just added things to it over time and I've just kind of connected it. So I need to go back through and uh, redo all the wiring. Another thing too is I've been using this uh, vacuum boot. Now that is more of a, a, a one that just holds onto the base of the, uh, the spindle and moves up and down. Now I did add some magnets onto that so they do kind of just snap on and snap off one of the major issues about having magnets like that is when you dive into material it does sometimes get stuck and then they might fall off and, and get stuck and then cause issues to your cut um, but besides that it has worked pretty well over this time uh, and I'll still continue to refine things and add things onto this machine as I go I'd really like to create one that just stays still and it will move independently from this uh, spindle that's probably all I'm going to do to this machine for its uh, lifespan but there's some really exciting content coming up in the next few weeks on my channel so guys I'll really appreciate if you subscribed and if you like this video today give it a thumbs up but there is some content coming up which is super exciting and I'd love you to join in the journeys with me so thanks very much for watching guys and I'll see you next time